when I go to a new place to go fly fishing, first impressions are key. And my first impressions of Newfoundland are nothing short of astounding. You see, when we landed in Gander, I got off the plane behind a young father and his son. The father looked down to his son and said, Smell that boy? And the kid looked up and said, What's that, Dad? Dad said, That sweet Newfoundland hair. Well, I'm here to tell you he's 100% correct. This place is incredible. When we got to the lodge, we decided to go fishing for the last hour before sunset. And all I heard was, oh, you're right, man, just leave it over a bit, no? Got him. You're right, boy. That fish was a 12-pound Atlantic salmon. I'm here to tell you, these fish are huge. This is our first full day at White Cliff Lodge on the Gander River. Come join us for this big fish adventure on the new Fly Fisher. It starts right now. Welcome to what Canadians lovingly refer to as The Rock. Known internationally as the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, we are staying at White Cliff Lodge on the Gander River, deep in the heart of central Newfoundland. In all honesty, Newfoundland and Labrador is arguably the most welcoming place on earth. The people are wonderful. <laughs> the land is vast, the rivers huge, and the fishing fantastic. Steeped in maritime tradition, many people of The Rock have traditionally relied on commercial fishing in the Western Atlantic. However, after the cod crash of the early 90s, many islanders turned to travel and tourism for their livelihoods. And today, recreational fishing plays a major part. Yes, stocks have returned such that you can use traditional methods for cod fishing, but also Newfoundland and Labrador's Atlantic salmon fishery is incredible. We've arrived in Gander Bay on the world famous Gander River. On historic family land, Alvin Gillingham has constructed a fantastic salmon lodge upstream from the mouth of the river, smack in the middle of prime salmon waters. Welcome to White Cliff Lodge. Well, we begin this adventure at White Cliff Lodge on the Gander River in Newfoundland. There are many ways to fish Atlantic salmon, dries, swinging wet flies, uh, and most common is fishing flies with a hitch on it. So it skitters across the surface of the water, creating a wake. Well, here at the lodge, they recommend no hitch at all, and that allows the fly to run just slightly subsurface, which brings up a lot more salmon. Another reason for great hookup ratio is Alvin and Dave here, they actually widen the gap of the hooks a little bit just to get that extra little bit of room so that the fish can, can get, actually get hooked. Now we've managed to hit it perfectly here in July. We have a full moon in two days. Apparently the tides are right. This should stay very well for some awesome Atlantic salmon fishing. Fish. What have you done? You can only tell you. So the fly we've got on today is we've got a, probably a number. Number 10. A number 10? Yeah. Number 10 Undertaker on. And it's a really sparse fly with some red, some green, and some yellow on it. And of course, being in Newfoundland, all hooks are barbless. Ooh, that's a good oh, fish. That's a monster. That's a big one. That's a monster. <laughs> He's 10 pounds. 10 pound fish to sure. start the trip, unbelievable. Let's make sure we can keep them, keep them buttoned here. Oh, sweet. Big fish. That's a thick one, man. Yeah. Now we're just a couple of days out from full moon, Alvin. What does that do to this fishery? Good for tide. Tides are coming on. Tides That's are it. coming in? Salmon are moving. Moves the fish. When he comes in on tides. Best run you get. Now it's important to take line when you can, but as soon as you feel that opposite pressure, you need to let them run. That's why having reels with excellent drag systems that are smooth and can handle speed are imperative. Now if I could grab him by the tail, you think that's possible? Yeah. We can take a look at him? Can you grab him by the tail there? You, you should probably grab him better than I can. Look at that. Fish, man. Fantastic. 
That's Atlantic cool. salmon. How great is that? How big? That's got to be 10 pounds. 10 pounds, 10 or 12 pounds, yeah. 10, 12 pounds. Already got a kipe on it? Yeah, good. Fantastic. Good fish. So we just had a fish come up on this fly. It's important not to give any more line. You know, the way we're fishing this is every six inches, every cast increasing the line length by six inches to effectively swing and cover the entire water column. But that fish came up and ate it, so Atlantic salmon generally stay in the same spot unless they're on the move. You don't want to pass it over its head again by adding any more line. So we'll keep it at the same, same line length and keep moving that fly over where that fish is living or hanging out at the meantime. Fish. You got a man. Another one, perfect. Fantastic. That's the second fish out at 45 degrees. Woo, smoker. So we've been fishing this area for probably about an hour and a half. Caught a really nice big salmon and seen a bunch of grills jumping. But what we did was we moved the boat down about 10 feet towards this rock. And this is the rock that we want to target. And um, what that does to the area that you're fishing, if you're hammering an area and, and, and uh, you're not seeing anything else happening, you know, consider, wow, into the backing. Yeah, slowing down, slowing down a little. He's going downtown. Slowing down a little. Tighten that drag way down on them. Yeah. By adjusting the angle that you're casting, it effectively shows the fish a different pattern, really. Uh, the fly swings at a different speed. Um, you know, it, it can get, get at a di different depth. It just shows, something, shows them something a little bit different. And this little guy liked what we had to offer then decided to go for a long run. Oh yeah, bright fish. Fantastic salmon. You, uh, you want to grab him by the tail? Yep. You, you give me a leader, I'll bring him to the boat. Can you grab him by the tail? And it doesn't matter the size of these Atlantics. <laughs> like a bullet. They are as powerful and as shirt drenching as you can ever imagine. So good. White Cliff Lodge, located on Newfoundland's famed Gander River, is a fantastic lodge, strategically located amongst some of the most productive salmon water in the province. The lodge is full service, providing everything you'll need for an incredible adventure. Full amenities include a recently constructed lodge with full kitchen and four bedrooms that sleep eight people total. With open-style cathedral ceilings, this family-style lodge is designed for you to feel at home away from home. your steps from the river, and always in great hands. Just seen a salmon come up and put in by the shore in there. There's salmon everywhere. Well, I like this, these conditions. Uh, they're a lot calmer than this morning. It's still really windy, but the surface chop isn't nearly as high, and you can see the fish. I'm assuming you can see the fish coming up a lot easier. Oh! Didn't prick them. Got him, boy, you got not. They could grab it in time, eh? Yeah. Nice fish. Nice boy. Great jump. Real. Another grill. So it's just after lunch, mid mid afternoon, and uh, we decided to come back out for the evening run. Well, we haven't been here 10 minutes yet, have we? We did, yeah. Switched back to a Undertaker. And what I like about this is that the, even though it is still super windy out, the conditions of the water have changed and you can actually, it's a lot flatter, even though the wind is still quite high. And um, it, it, it's a lot easier for you to see these fish come up and take, take these flies, these wet flies, so. Um, visually, it's it's a lot more entertaining. Visually, uh, you have a lot more confidence because 
you're not oh he came loose you're not missing you're not missing uh missing takes so uh that was great that was good fun and you know what he just came on button still have the fly it's part of it <laughs> yes it You got him, boy. Same you got him. rock. You got him, boy. Grandmother's rock, boy. Woo! Grandmother's rock, buddy. It's a good rock. Oh, it's a rock. Grandmother's <laughs> rock. Why is it called Grandmother's Rock? My father used to tell me. He used to go down this river. He, he'd go in there with the oak fitter I was telling you about. Yeah. And he said that one time an old grandmother come in there, and even the old grandmother could catch a salmon there. That's how he put the name on rock. Grandmother's Rock. That's yeah. great. That's a salmon nice too, fish, man. Boy. Good fish. Nice fish. Oh yeah. Going upstream. Yeah, he's a nice fish, buddy. So let's talk a little bit about the leader material that I'm using here for uh, these Atlantic salmon. I've got a six foot, 12 pound tapered leader from the fly line to the tippet. <laughs> oh, fish, man. Huh? And then a 10 pound straight shot, four feet of uh of clear fluorocarbon and i'm telling you you need <laughs> every bit of it that was awesome <laughs> and of course barbless hooks there it goes again leaper jumper fantastic you get five jumps out of a salmon anywhere and it's gold it's gold, Alvin. Yeah, that fish is, what is it, eight pound? Yeah. Oh, Every eight, bit of it. Eight or more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he came loose. What a fantastic fish. Yeah. We got the best part of all of them on that. Oh, yeah. On eight, 10, 12 pound fish, <laughs> seven leaps. That's so good. Got him. You got him, bye. Good take. Excellent fish. Big, dark, black back, hey? Oh, that's a nice fish. You can't be tired already. No, I wouldn't say. <laughs> he hasn't seen the boat yet, right? It's amazing how just, you know, you can swing, a, swing an area, swing a run, for a while, get a couple moves, keep on it, nothing happens, switch fly, totally different ball game. Oh, yeah. Same run, different fishery. They're so sensitive to, a, to fly choice that a fish that could have been negative to let's say an undertaker without any neon in it or anything like that, all of a sudden you switch it up and boom, turns it on. Gross Atlantic salmon. I already got a kipe, little male, fantastic fish. Let's keep them wet. There we go. There's a commonality of wet flies used throughout Newfoundland and Labrador that are tried and true patterns used for generations of fly fishers. These selections are suggested as must-haves, but certainly not the only flies you should have on hand. Talk to your outfitter or guide for a proven selection of flies for the river you're heading to before you travel. Here at White Cliff Lodge, Alvin recommends the tried and true Blue Charm, Undertaker, and Silver Tip. Another staple of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador is the chosen mode of transportation. One of the more iconic aspects of any fly fishing trip in Newfoundland and Labrador is this beauty. This is the Gander Riverboat and is responsible for getting you safely up and down shallow rivers. The history of the Gander Riverboat goes back to the early days of salmon fishing in Newfoundland and Labrador, where a reliable, stable boat was needed to safely negotiate the Gander River. Today, ideal boats are seven to eight meters long with a beam of just over one meter. 
They draft very shallow, can carry tremendous loads, and are extremely maneuverable. They can be rowed, pulled, or even have been modified to hold an outboard engine. They are a comfortable, safe, and reliable way to navigate the waters of the Gander River, a definite bonus on any salmon excursion. We head up river today to Lou's Pool, and things pick up right where they left off. Got it, Got it. You got it. Take your line in. Uh, yeah, another gross, but still fantastic fish. A leaper. Gotta love it. This is what Atlantic salmon fishing is all about. I mean, you've got bright, fresh, wild fish that have just come in from the ocean, readily eating wet flies. You can hitch them. You can, uh, you can not hitch them. You can throw dry flies for them. And this is such a special, special fishery. All right, you think he's almost ready? Yeah, I think he's pretty good there now. No, came loose. That's the thing about barbless hooks, right? They're perfect for the quick release. That fish is off, ready to do its thing. So what we see in front of us is a massive minefield, if you will, of boulders, runs, riffles, pools. So we're gonna take it piece by piece. We're gonna start, we're gonna fish the right-hand side of the boat. So where do you begin in approaching structure for Atlantic salmon? Well, I like to begin at the beginning of my fly line. Um, you don't know where these fish are. You don't know what behavior they're doing. So why not start as physically close to you as you possibly can and then slowly work your way out. Atlantic salmon fishing is all about picking apart the pool, picking apart the piece of structure and making sure you cover every single piece such that you're not passing your fly over top of a salmon's head. How do you do that? Very simply. Start at the end of your fly line, cast 45 degrees across, and with a tight line, let it swing down to 90 degrees down from where you are. Okay? It's as simple as that. Next cast, pull out four to six inches, maybe eight inches, do it again. 45 degrees, follow the fly line with your rod tip, all the way down. Do that until you're at the end of your casting ability or you're at the end of the run and you will have effectively fished that area for these fantastic Atlantic salmon. Fish. Oh, it's a salmon too, thank my goodness. Well, first time I tied on the Gillingham twist and it's, it's it held the first jump, Alvin. <laughs> the Gillingham twist is a knot that Alvin just showed me. Oh, it's a nice one, boy. That can, uh, that actually the knot sits in the eye of the hook. And this was my third swing at this spot. <laughs> this fish came up and whacked it. Now these fish are upriver a significant amount from the fish we were fishing yesterday. So um, they're not going to be as bright, are they? Some of them are. Some of the, yeah, this oh, one yeah. is. Oh yeah. They're moving right through, eh? Yep. What a good fish. Fantastic fish. Hook pops right out. Good. And we can let him go. You wanna grab that GoPro? <sighs> Never mind. There he goes, smack me in the face. <laughs> Guess I deserve that one. <laughs> Put her there. Well on, buddy. Good fish. Good job. Equipment used on this episode of The New Fly Fisher is key to success in landing these sporty salmon. For the rods, we use nine foot, nine weight rods. For our reels, insist on an excellent large arbor reel with a trusted drag system. These fish will run and a reliable drag is a must. Lines are floating as per regulation in Newfoundland and Labrador. Nine weight, weight forward floating lines paired with a nine to 12 foot, 10 pound leader will do the trick for Atlantic salmon at White Cliff Lodge. Got man. Fish. Got Woo! Oh. <laughs> On a moose hair, black fly. It's very sparse. Oh, another fish just jumped here. The fish are coming in. Oh, they're coming alive again anyway. Oh, man. 
just when you think they're done. That is absolutely incredible. Oh. Hey, listen, I want to thank you for <laughs> watching this episode of The New Fly Fisher, coming to you from the Gander River in Gander, Newfoundland and Labrador. It is absolutely wonderful. The salmon fishery here is strong. There are fish everywhere. I want to thank Alvin and Dave Gillingham at White Cliff Lodge. For more information, check out www.thenewflyfisher.com. Hi, I'm Mark Melnick from the New Fly Fisher Television Show. If you enjoyed that video, do me a favor, hit the like button and subscribe today. Also, we're uploading new videos all the time, so hit the bell to be notified when the next one goes up.